Today, I'm sharing with you 10 hidden iPhone tips that you're probably not even using. It can be frustrating if you need to move your cursor to the middle of a sentence or something and make a correction, but there is a hidden trackpad on the iPhone. You simply just tap and hold your finger on the space bar and after about a second, it turns into a trackpad so that you can move your cursor wherever you need it. There are also a couple of nifty hidden keyboard gems on the iPhone. For example, you know where the shift key is and at the beginning of each sentence here, you know that it'll capitalize that first letter. But if you double tap on the shift key, you notice there's a little line under the arrow and that means now you are in caps lock mode or caps lick. There's also some hidden accented letters and symbols. For example, if you tap and hold on a vowel, for example, you can see that you can move your finger over and select an accented letter. Or if you go to the symbols page or the keyboard there, you've got a couple of hidden symbols. For example, if you need a cent symbol, which most of the time we don't, but if you tap and hold on the dollar sign, you can see there's some international currency as well as a cent symbol. And probably one of my favorite for lawyers, if you tap and hold on the ampersand, you actually can find the section symbol. I thought I was hot stuff when I found that, except lawyers would come up and ask me, what about a paragraph symbol? Well, there is no hidden paragraph symbol, but that's what the next tip is for. The iPhone has something called text replacement, which is found in the settings app under general, the keyboard, and then text replacement. You can see there at the top. Now what this means is you can create your own text replacement snippets, whatever phrase and a shortcut. For example, I could never remember how to spell Judge Shinlin's name. So I created a little text replacement and you can see my shortcut is just J Shira. So if I go back to my notes and just type J Shira, and if I hit the space bar, it will actually not only spell her name correctly every time, but it'll put her entire title there as well. So if I go back and show you here under my text replacement, I actually created a replacement for the paragraph symbol. I just found a paragraph symbol, copied it here into the text replacement, and you can see my shortcut is P para. So if I go back here to my notes app and type P para, hit the space bar, it automatically inserts a paragraph symbol for me. Now typically when we type, we just simply tap each character or letter to type, but you can now swipe your finger over the keyboard and the iPhone will actually do a pretty good job of recognizing what you mean to type. There's actually a couple of uh, hidden keyboards here as well for a one-handed keyboard. If you tap and hold on the globe icon, which allows you to switch back and forth between like international keyboards, at the very bottom there, you can see that you can shove the keyboard slightly over to the left or to the right. So if you fancy yourself as a one-handed typer, you can type with uh, one thumb just like this to go back to the normal keyboard, just hit the little arrow key over there on the left. When you need to select text to copy it so you can paste it somewhere else, uh, you can tap and hold and try to select the text and move it around, or you can just double tap on a word and that'll select that single word for you. Or if you triple tap on a word, it'll select the entire sentence. Now you can copy that. One of the best keyboard shortcuts on a computer is Control Z or Command Z on a Mac. That is the undo command, which I find myself using a lot throughout the day. There are a couple of undo options here on the iPhone. The, the first is probably the most dangerous method. It requires you to have a very firm grasp on your iPhone. But if you simply just shake it back and forth, you can see that the undo option appears and it'll undo the last thing you did. If you shake it again, you, it'll allow you to redo the last typing that you did. Now, I don't recommend that method for obvious reasons there. Fortunately, there is a much easier way. It's the three finger tap or swipe. If you take three fingers and simply tap on your screen, you can see at the very top there, you've got a little extra uh, control panel. That's the undo command and the redo command. It also has the copy and paste options in there as well. Or if you take three fingers and simply swipe to the left on your screen, you can see a little undo confirmation bubble pops up at the very top. Take three fingers, swipe to the right, 
and it'll redo it for you with the confirmation bubble as well. My eyes are not getting any younger, and if you're in the same boat, you'll be very happy to know that the iPhone has a built-in magnifying glass. Now, the first step is to make sure this is turned on, and for that, you need to go into the Settings app, go down to Accessibility, and about the third item down, you can see Magnifier. Just go into that and make sure that it is turned on. Now the next step is what I usually recommend is that you set the magnifier as your accessibility shortcut. And to do that, you go back to accessibility options all the way down to the bottom. There is the accessibility shortcut. Now you can set this to whatever you want. I just like having it as the magnifier because the accessibility shortcut is a triple click on the side button. So if I go click, 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 that will automatically bring up the magnifier for me. And this allows you to zoom into something that is a little bit difficult to see. This is much better than just the zoom option on the camera. You can turn on the flashlight if you need to, you can change the contrast, and then even better, you can take a picture of something once it is zoomed in. If you've got at least an iPhone 8 and you are currently running iOS 14, you've got a really neat hidden back tap option involved in your phone. To get this, you just need to go back to settings, go back to accessibility, and about in the middle of that list there, you'll see a touch option. If you tap on touch and you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you'll see the back tap option. So tap in that, and then you have two options here. You can uh, set something specific for a double tap as well as a triple tap. So you can see I've got the app switcher set as my double tap. And in this, you just simply hold the iPhone and tap tap the back of the iPhone and it'll go into my app switcher. And you can see my triple tap goes to the control center. For, so if I go tap, 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 that will automatically bring up my control center. This is probably one of my favorite tips. If there's any place where you need to convert an email or a web page into a PDF file so that you can mark it up or annotate it or send it to somebody, that option is built right into the iPhone. I am on a web page here of my good friend Jeff Richardson at iPhone JD, and I want to convert this website, this blog post, into a PDF. The first step is to bring up the print option. So you can see the print option is right there. If you tap on print, you can see I don't want to go to my physical printer, but you see at the bottom there is a nice little print preview. If you take your thumb and forefinger and you basically just spread those two fingers apart on the print preview, it automatically generates a PDF file. And then at this point you can email it to somebody or you can send it over into a PDF app so you can annotate the PDF. If you have the iPhone 6S or later, Take a look around and see if you have something called the Measure app. This is a really nifty built-in tool here that will literally let you measure physical objects. So I've got it opened here and I want to know how big this notebook is. So I'm just going to put it on the corner, hit the little plus sign, and then drag it all the way down to the other edge. And it literally will tell me the measurement of that little book. And I can keep on going here, for example, and take the measurement of the other side. <laughs> really, really helpful for like measuring a table or something for your office. If you look at the very bottom of this app, you'll also find that there is a level option in here. So you can tap on that and that becomes a helpful level that you can set down on your desk and make sure that everything is absolutely level. Bonus tip, who carries coins around in their pockets anymore? But you are going to carry your iPhone. So if you ever need to flip a coin, all you have to do is Hey Siri, flip a coin. Tails. Thanks for watching. If you want more information about using apps in your practice, you can visit my blog, appsinlaw.com, and you're welcome to reach out with any questions.